Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and again we praise the Lord. So I know Solid Rock is ready to come on in, and others, I believe, will be ready to join us. So we just want you to tag and share, and make sure that you just uh, worship the Lord tonight. So come on, Solid Rock, I'm waiting on you. You know that awkward mama. Hey, Joey, so glad you're with us tonight. Minister Phillips, Deborah Badillo. Uh, we're just glad you're in the room. Amen. We are expecting God to fill this room and to fill this atmosphere with his divine presence and glory. So tonight, it, on everybody's agenda, should be one thing, that we want to worship him in spirit and in truth and magnify his name. We're blessed tonight. We have uh, Justin with us, and he's playing for us tonight, which is a wonderful uh, experiment. Hallelujah. Amanda. Amen. Evangeline Bullock, we're just glad you're with us tonight. Uh, Brenda Pepley, hey, how are you? Pat Swartz, evening, evening, amen. We're just giving everybody a few minutes to come on. Hallelujah. Wanda Long, amen. Good to see you. Pat Stinnin' Mock, amen. All the way from Texas. Mary Jones Ellis, Evelyn Parker, Minister Phillips, we see you. Praise God. You know, it's a wonderful thing. To have the Lord in your heart tonight, and we're just we're honoring the God of heaven. So we invite him now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to anoint us, O oh God, to do your bidding. Father, we ask you to send out the anointing across the airways and cause them to know you and feel you. Oh God, strengthen those that are weak tonight, encourage those that are downcast. Oh, God, we know you're our present help. We know tonight that you're the answer to America's dilemma. And we ask you now to stir your church, stir your people, God. Rekindle the fire of the Holy Ghost and let it burn within the lives of your people again. Father, anoint us to sing, anoint us to play, anoint us to preach. Whatever it is you want us to do tonight, we thank you, Lord, that you heal, deliver, and set free. And you get all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Good evening to everybody, everybody, everybody. So we're going to song, as usual, we're going to start with some of this old, old stuff. And the song says, leave it there.
just take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. No matter what you're dealing with tonight, the Lord is right there waiting to help you. Good to see Betty Henry and all the different ones that have been joining us, Kathleen Mays. We just welcome you tonight into the presence of a living God. Amen. So tonight, we're going to sing, My God is Real. So come on, sing with us tonight. Love for me, just like 
of God. Hallelujah. For all you that wasn't on when we first came on, uh, this is Justin Ramsey. I don't know if I can get it in the show, but there he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's playing for us tonight and helping us sing a little. Amen. So uh, this is a new journey for him. And and, um, and I'm excited about what God is doing. And I am thankful that God is raising up young men and young women to carry on and do the work of the kingdom. So tonight, you know, you might have sons and daughters, and they might be on the wrong path, or maybe they've drifted far from God. But the good news is, the Bible says, In the last days saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So, you know, tonight, uh, the good news uh, is that God is calling and pouring out uh, and bringing our sons and our daughters uh, back to where they rightfully belong. Uh, the adversary doesn't, have, doesn't own them. Uh, they don't belong to him. That's just our seed. Uh, and it is good to know uh, that our great God uh, is going to rescue them and yes. bring them back uh, to the fold of heaven. Uh, hallelujah. I am blessed tonight just to know the Lord and have all of you to join us. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you know anything we're singing tonight, just jump right in and sing a little bit with us. Amen.
just go ahead and praise the Lord right now for your miracle. Hallelujah. He is the God of miracles. He's the great physician. He's the great provider. He's the one that makes ways for the seeming to be no way. So whatever you need right now would be the right time to give him the praise and the honor and the glory. See, faith is a, a praise is the language of faith. And if you believe that God has touched you, you don't wait to see the signs or the evidence. You just by faith say, Lord, I thank you for the victory. Lord, I thank you for the breakthrough. Lord, I thank you for the Yes. Lord, I thank you yes. because you're right now working on my behalf. Yes. Glory, glory to God. God. So it's up to you and me. Uh, glory yes, to God. Yes. Hallelujah. To position ourselves and say to God, I know that you're working it out yes. for me and for my situation. Thank Amen. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. gracious and uh, there's some songs we we rarely sing so uh, I don't have any trouble you know if, if I get them right it's great if I don't get it right it's still okay because I'm doing it for the glory of God so you know uh, I'm just grateful but this song it just ministers to my heart sometimes when I think about it it just simply says stand still and let God move and I know some of you are struggling with things in your life and you're wondering, where is God? Tell Moses, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. So you know, sometimes in life, you just got to wait on God. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he'll strengthen your heart. The Bible also says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up 
with the wings as the eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. So it's important that we learn how to wait on the Lord. Sometimes we want it and we want it right now. We don't want to have to wait for it. But his timing, I promise you, will be perfect always. So I encourage you tonight, stand still and let God move. Stand still and let God move. you 
we're going to try to honor that request. Um, Sherry, uh, what was her name? Darlene. Darlene made a request, amen, and we're going to sing that song for you, Darlene. I haven't seen you come on here, but I guess I guess you'll see it eventually. If you don't see it now, you'll see it in the replay, amen. So uh, this is an old song, and I know y'all can help us sing it.
You know, today as I was meditating on what I need to talk about tonight, I heard the Spirit say, get rid of the clutter. And I know that, uh, you know, sometimes in my own house, uh, there's just certain areas <laughs> that just seems it's easy to pile stuff up on. You know, you for long, it just is a real, real mess. <laughs> it just... You can't even find anything because everything's all piled up. You know, if you see my dining room table right now, you say, man, that's a sight right there. Because we've been crafting and doing things, and so all that stuff is piled up on the table. You know, uh, it just seems easier sometimes to move things around than to deal with it. And so often our spiritual life can be kind of insane, but we just keep piling stuff up. We are constantly just piling one thing on after another until after a while our lives kind of look like my table in there piled up. You know, before long, our life is full of all kinds of clutter. And, and it's a whirlwind of good intentions and bad directions we've taken or maybe a load of participation of a litter of purpose. And it stays this way until God intervenes but isn't it good to know that he's got a strong arm and he's able to intervene and, and sweep and clear the table or clear our hearts or clear our minds 2 Corinthians 5 and 9 says wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him so you know the whole goal of this life is to please God it's not to do our own thing or live however we want to. Our whole goal in this life is to please God. So, so no matter what state you're in at the current moment, that should always be in your mind. I need, I want to live to please God. What my choices, I want them to please God. Everything I do, I want it to please God. And Paul assures the Corinthians that he is full of hope. No matter what's going on, he says, I still got hope. Hallelujah. And he does and Paul says, listen, I'm not going to lose heart no matter what's going on. Uh, and I really believe the church has to wake up and say, listen, uh, I may not understand what's happening. I may not like it, uh, but I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to lose faith and lose hope. Uh, I'm going to be courageous and strong uh, and stand on the truth of God's word. Uh, hallelujah. You cannot lose hope. 2 Corinthians 3.12 Seeing then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech. I'm not here to dress it up. There's chaos on every side. I'll tell you there's clutter and if you're not careful it's going to clutter your way of thinking. Uh, it's going to clutter the way you act toward one another. Uh, if, if you're not careful uh, there's just going to be all kinds of clutter in your spirit uh, and you and me cannot afford that tonight. He said we have hope. I recognize it don't look good. Hey, but so what? God is still good. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1, Therefore, see, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Hallelujah. It's no time for you to faint. It's no time for you to get weary. It's no time for you to give up. Hallelujah. We have hope. The Bible declares that we have a sure anchor for our soul. And that anchor is Jesus Christ. So make your mind up tonight that you're not going to faint. You're not going to grow weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. But you have received mercy. And because of that mercy, we are not going to faint. Hallelujah. I recognize that the pressures uh, that people feel, uh, there's a lot of pressure people feel, uh, and before long their mind is cluttered. Uh, if you watch the news and you hear people talk, uh, before, uh, before long your mind is in such a mess. Uh, so we need God to sweep our minds. Uh, you know, earlier tonight I asked Justin if he know a song, Paint My Mind. And the truth is we need uh, the blood of Jesus to paint our minds, uh, to declutter all that stuff that's in our thoughts uh, and in our actions and in our attitudes our whole goal is to please God 2 Corinthians 4 16 for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day <laughs> hallelujah that's a wonderful scripture to me 
Every day I get up, I can be renewed all over again. And you need to purpose that in your own heart. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. That's true. Great is his faithfulness. Uh, hallelujah. But isn't it good to know? Hallelujah. We can be renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5 and 6. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Uh, but Paul said, listen, I'm, I, I'd rather to be absent from the body to be, and be present with the Lord. But while I'm here, while I'm living here, while I'm still here, uh, I want to make sure that the deeds of my life are pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to make sure that the way I treat you uh, is pleasing to Him. Uh, I want to make sure that the way I act toward anybody is pleasing to him. I, I want to make sure that the life I live uh, is pleasing to him. Uh, I'm here to tell you, it really matters, beloved. Uh, you might think, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yes, but it does matter. Uh, hallelujah. You are a, a living epistle that is read by men. Uh, people are watching you. You're the only Bible some people are ever going to take notice of. And does your life speak for him? You know, what Paul said was that he guarantees that we can have this kind of courage. Philippians 1.21 says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So you know, while I'm living, I want to make sure that the light that God has given me is shining bright. And I want to make sure that I am truly the salt of the earth. I want to make sure that the people won't have to ask me, am I a Christian? But my life will speak for itself. They won't have to say, hey, do you know the Lord? Because once they meet me, they're going to be able to verify and witness, hey, she knows Jesus. Glory to God. The clutter of our lives makes us lose sight of our, our very purpose of even being here. Sometimes our mind and our lives are so cluttered and, and so busy till we feel so much tension and we wonder why. At the end of the day, what matters is whether we have pleased the Lord or not. So whatever you've done today, as you look back on it, could he smile and say, good job. You did great today. And if not, we have an advocate with the Father. And if we ask him, he will abundantly pardon. You know, at the end of the day, you're not going to stand before your boss or your neighbors or your friends or your peers. You're not going to stand before your kids or your colleagues. But we're going to stand before Jesus. We're going to see him face to face. And in that moment, the only thing that matters is what he thinks. It's not about what they thought. So you see, your whole aim in life must be to please Jesus. The ambition of my every day and my every decision must be, i got to please Jesus. So sometimes, see, we, we, it's great to have confidence in people, and it's great, all that's great. But I'm here to tell you, it's only the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that's going to work for you and me. Grace alone, we're brought to Christ, justified, saved from wrath, made his children forever. Don't mistake please with appease. See, I won't do just enough to appease him. I want to oh, please God, him. That's so good. You know, your kids sometimes will do just enough to kind of take the heat off. And, you know, and then go right back to business as usual. But I don't want to be like that with the Lord. I don't want to appease him. I want to please him. I want to hear him say, well done at the end of this journey. I don't want my life to be wasted and, and me pretending to be a good Christian and pretending this and pretending that. But, honey, I want real, genuine power of the Holy Ghost uh, yes, working Lord. in my life. Uh, my life and if there's anything Ghost. in my life that's not right, uh, I want the Holy Ghost to highlight it right yes, now uh, and bring it to my attention. Uh, because while there's blood still running warm in my veins uh, and there's air in my lungs, uh, I've got time to make it right with the Lord. Uh, so you you know, it really matters tonight, friend, uh, how you live uh, and how you act and how you treat people. It really does matter. 
Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, you know, it's essential that we understand that we really don't belong to us. We belong to him. Hallelujah. And so all the clutter, it just keeps you from getting to where you need to be. Uh, clutter keeps you from fulfilling your purpose and destiny in this earth. I really believe many churches are trapped in clutter. <laughs> They're stopped in their tracks. <laughs> their spiritual movement has been stifled. And instead of moving forward with a powerful purpose, they are standing still. You know, there's, there's, there's several kinds of standing still. <laughs> and the truth is, when you stand still and don't do nothing, that is not what, what standing still really means. Standing still with God is waiting on Him, and while you wait, you're doing everything you can to please Him and yes. keeping things working right. But if you stand still and fold your arms and don't do nothing, you're just happy the way things are as usual. God is wanting to break in on our patterns and our routines. Uh, and he's wanting to just set us on fire with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I know folk don't want the fire. I know they don't want the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I'm one that I still want it. I still like what it does in me. Uh, and I'm grateful uh, for what God can do with one touch uh, of that great power. Uh, hallelujah. He he wants to unclutter your mind tonight, unclutter your life tonight. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes we're so busy, uh, we don't take time to pray. We don't have time to read. Uh, we don't build that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, with the Lord uh, because there's so much clutter in our lives. So the Lord said to me tonight, earlier today, it's time to declutter. So I'm thinking, wow, Lord, what does that really mean for us? <laughs> and I realize it's challenging, you know, because when I look at that table, I think, hmm, I don't really go do anything that has cleaned off that table in there. There's all kinds of stuff in there, honestly. If you could only see, I, I, I can't make you know, but if you could only see. And sometimes that's the way we are with the Spirit. We'd rather put it all than to have to really deal with it. Some of you are holding grudges and, and you won't forgive and you won't let go. And it's become clutter in your spirit. So now you stagnate and you don't move forward in that that God's called you to move into. All of us have some clutter. And tonight the Lord is saying, I want you to get that out of the way. I want you to do some spiritual house cleaning. You know we say we spring clean, but now it's spiritual clean. We need to take inventory, stop, stop checking up everybody else, and look in the mirror of God's Word at your own self. And say, okay, God, whatever in me does, that I need to get rid of, show it to me. You know, editors, heart surgeons, personal trainers, professional organizers, all have a challenging task. Whether it's removing unnecessary words or... Uh, blockage in an artery, excess weight, or, or hoarded clutters. Oh, Jesus. You know, there are folks that, that they just, they're called hoarders because they have so much clutter. But, you know, the, they all do the same thing. They facilitate the elimination of bad things. So, in other words, they make room for the good by removing the bad. Joshua 24 and 14 says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. Joshua said, listen, you got to make a choice. He said, but I've already made my choice. And I'm saying to you tonight, you've got to make a choice. Whether you're going to keep living like you're living or you're going to take the time to declutter your mind, your spirit, your attitude, and your actions and say, Lord, I want to please you. 
Pleasing him sometimes is difficult because we like to hold on to things and not let go. That's how people become hoarders. They don't want to let go of anything. They want to keep everything. And so it is sometimes with we, the church. We hold grudges. We hold unforgiveness. We hold jealousy. We hold pride. We hold envy and malice and strife until it clutters us up and our spirit is not free. You know, physical clutter can waste time because you got to dig through all that to find what you're looking for. <laughs> that's good, Kathy. Kathleen Mays, that's awesome. <laughs> for all y'all, she said, I've been in the process of decluttering for a month and many things have gone. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so, you know, all of us have to do it whether we want to or not because the Lord's requiring you to. You say, well, well, why do I need to do that? You see, when you don't deal with worries and you don't deal with unconfessed sins and you don't deal with bitterness and things that crowd your heart, it can cause it to muffle out the voice of God that you can't even hear Him. It can rob you of your joy. It can harm your Christian witness. It can stunt your spiritual growth. And it can poison your relationships. Spiritual spring cleaning is more important than any other task on your to-do list right now. But you know, the good thing to me tonight is I don't have to go through it alone. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It's so easy for you to see people's flesh, but sometimes we forget that spirit can get nasty too. So you got to become proactive to spiritually spring clean. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So tonight I encourage you to pray for discernment. <laughs> Ask the Lord what needs to be cleared out of your life, out of your thoughts, out of your mind, out of your actions. And then ask him to give you the courage to break free of it and clean it. So if we, if the Lord says we need a spiritual checkup, then that's what we need. And I know that there's somebody listening to me tonight. You need to declutter. You've been carrying that stuff way too long. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, not Jesus, us, Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hoarders are, are known because they keep everything they own until it becomes harmful to their surroundings. But because they have such a connection to these things, it becomes almost impossible for them to let them go. It now has become a sickness that has overtaken their lives. Not letting go cause their life to become full of clutter. And I ask you, what are you still holding on to? Some of us have become spiritual hoarders. Instead of getting rid of these things, we hold on to them and continue to add to the mess. Going back to the way it used to be is not an option. You've got a purpose tonight that you're going to move forward. There are no casual Christians or convenient Christianity. There are no part-time saints or occasional believers. We either are with Him or against Him. We're either building or breaking, functional or obsolete. So which way is it for you? So tonight, I simply leave leaving this thought with you. Declutter. Don't allow what the news is saying and what friends are saying and what people are saying to clutter your mind and to steal from you the joy that Jesus has afforded us. Make a decision tonight that you're going to believe what the Word says and you're going to stand on that Word. Choose to serve the Lord. And remember, your ultimate goal is to please Him. So Father, tonight I lift up 
those that have been watching and those even ones that prayed for me, my blood pressure. God, we speak to that blood pressure tonight and command it to regulate and come to normal. Oh God, I pray for those tonight that are struggling with the things that have cluttered their minds and their attitude and their actions. Oh God, let the Holy Ghost sweep our houses, sweep our hearts, sweep our minds, and cause us to be everything you've called us to be. Oh God, we want to please you. Father, we ask you now, show us what we need to get rid of. Show us what to take out. Show us what to lay aside. You said, let us lay aside every sin that so easily besets us. Oh God, if we're walking in unforgiveness, forgive us. Oh God, if we're holding grudges, forgive us. If we're jealous, forgive us, Lord, and cause us, oh God, to have a fresh renewing of your presence and your spirit. Father, help us to forgive so that we might be forgiven. Father, tonight, touch your people. Heal, deliver, and set free. Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For we know that you love us and it's your desire that we make heaven our home. So tonight, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for your spirit that's so real. I thank you for your presence, I know, that goes with us. And I thank you tonight for the decluttering of our minds and our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I thank you for healing and delivering tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that you enjoyed tonight Justin playing, and I appreciate him coming to help us. Amen. Thank you, Pat, Deborah. Amen. We love all of you. And um, take the time to ask the Lord to help you declutter your mind and every other thing that's cheating from you, robbing from you the best that heaven has afforded. We love you. We pray God's blessings be upon you. And see you Sunday morning if you're here. Good to see you, Stephanie and Sonny. Amen. All the rest of you, we love you. God bless you.